Okay, let's talk about something really important. Something that you won't read about anywhere and will give you, hopefully, a good analogy about uh, digital ISO. So, what sort of perfect analogy could I draw as a ham radio operator that you would understand? Hopefully you would know a little bit about radio astronomy. So, this is an old analog shortwave radio. I'm a ham radio operator. I used to have a lot bigger rigs than this. Tuning into... Radio Moskva. So that's a signal coming out of Moscow. Moskva on the other side of the planet using this tiny little antenna. Well, what does that have to do with digital photography and understanding ISO? Well, there's no difference between taking a shot at f5.6 and 60th of a second at ISO 100 than the same aperture and the same shutter speed at ISO 25,000. So what's the difference and what do you need to understand and how is this directly applicable to how your digital camera works? And of course there are ISO-less sensors and um, there's different sensitivity sensors, a lot of which actually has to do with uh, the, uh, the uh, post sensor AD converters and the SNR firmware. So I don't know if you know anything about radio at all, but you actually have three places of gain. Gain, of course, is really important. You have sensor gain, you have signal gain, the signal that's actually received for amplification, AD converters and SNR firmware. That is why the future of all digital photography is that, well, let's actually state it another way. The future of all digital photography is the death of large photosite FX sensors. Not the size of FX sensors, but the large photosites that currently exist on FX sensors. As uh, Canon has already introduced, and I saw this coming a year and a half ago, actually I think I saw it coming two years ago, large photosites for increased gain on... Uh, digital uh, sensors, it's, it's redundant. It, it doesn't need to exist anymore. This was actually figured out over 50 years ago in radio astronomy. Instead of using large telescopic arrays for receiving uh, radio signals uh, from outer space, that they used arrays like the VLA. What is the case is that uh, both in radio, now more complicated shortwave radios, which I used to have a lot of, I still have an antenna farm in the backyard, is that uh, you actually have signal gain and then you actually have 80 converters and noise actually exists at a frequency the same way that noise exists at a certain free I forget the exact frequency that uh, noise exists at on digital uh, photography sensors but it doesn't matter what color the spectrum of the light is that noise has a specific thumbprint and AD converters and SNR firmware can reduce that. So you can actually have less gain. Say, for example, you crank up your ISO to, instead of 200, you got it to ISO 6400. Well, you have the exact same amount of light as long as the aperture remains the same and the shutter speed remains the same. So what the hell do you think you're doing by increasing the ISO on your digital sensor? Well, the only thing you're actually doing is actually increasing uh, the amplification. And of course, it's not surprising that the image quality typically decreases when the ISO amplification increases because noise and artifacts are also amplified, but that's not the case anymore. The exact same technology that exists with radio astronomy and ham radio exists in your digital camera. Electromagnetism is electromagnetism is electromagnetism is electromagnetism. You need to stop a second and process that in your brain. That means the light that is gathered by your digital sensor is no different than the light that is gathered by ham radio or uh, radio astronomy dishes. The exact same elimination of that noise using SNR firmware and AD converters, which by the way is the secret sauce. And the first thing that is backwards engineered, say Canon rolls out a new camera, First thing Nikon and everybody else does, they tear it apart and they go in there into the, uh, the non-editable uh, SNR firmware and see what uh, sort of SNR firmware that Canon has come up with. And when Nikon rolls out a new camera, 
Canon and everybody else tear us apart Nikon's camera to see what sort of secret sauce in the SNR firmware uh, that they've actually integrated, both in their AD converters and the SNR firmware. So you think that everything occurs at the sensor, but most of everything actually occurs post-sensor before it is actually buffered uh, to uh, your compact flash card or your SD card. Now let's go over three different things. Sensor gain. Okay. All things being equal, let's say you keep shutter speed at 1 60 of a second and aperture at f5.6. Okay? For the sake of argument, let's say that your aperture and your shutter speed remains the same. Same intensity of whatever it is you're shooting. So you have the exact same amount of light passing. Okay? Your ISO and your aperture remains the same. And if it's too dark, you need to increase your ISO. And uh, for whatever aesthetic reasons, you don't want to change your aperture or your shutter speed. What do you think is actually occurring? You know, what is occurring is signal amplification. So at sensor gain, you still have the exact same amount of light hitting at ISO 200 as you have occurring at ISO 6400 or ISO 25600. In both cases, the sensor is exposed the exact same amount of light. Okay, The amount of light or the real exposure is solely determined by the aperture and the shutter speed, obviously and logically so. This isn't the days of film anymore where large silver halide crystals, which had an increased gain and in sensitivity to being struck by light, of course you ended up with a, a grainy image, but it was more sensitive film. Of course, we're not talking about uh, post-processing, whether that was film or current uh, digital raw conversion. We'll get into that in a second. Next, we're talking about signal gain. All things being equal, what occurs at the gain of the sensor, that's it. Okay, so what happens after that? You have a second, uh, the secondary level of uh, signal gain. The signal received amplification, the SNR firmware and the AD converters, which actually take that signal and remove the noise. Okay, which does have, there's actually a harmonic, uh, like five or six different frequencies uh, that, uh, that noise and artifacts occur at, and that uh, in every modern, modern sensor, uh, modern, uh, excuse me, SNR firmware, whether it's a Fuji or a Canon or an Icon, is uh, designed to eliminate to the best possible ability. So what exactly is the ISO doing? ISO determines the amount of signal amplification that's applied to the image recorded to the sensor. Now there's a third level of gain, we'll get into that in a second. At ISO 800, for example, the amplification amounts to two stops over ISO 200, for example, and so on. ISO 25600, the additional amplification of the lights recorded to the sensor amounts to seven stops, for example. So. It should be no shock to you that all things being equal that identical uh, aperture and shutter speed that what you're actually doing by increasing bumping up your ISO, which is why you should always be shooting at the lowest ISO possible for obvious and logical reasons, so you're not amplifying even with the, uh, the great uh, bonuses of the SNR firmware that exist after the sensor and the AD converters, you should always be shooting at the lowest possible ISO you can get away with. Um, now, you may want grain, but of course it's easier to add that in post. You'd rather have a better raw file and add grain in post. Like, well, I want to capture a grainy image. Well, who gives a damn? You know, apply that in Lightroom or Capture One or Photoshop, but don't try to apply it in this, you know, at the level of the sensor. You know, this isn't the days of film anymore. Um, the third level, software gain. Raw converters such as Lightroom, Capture One, Aperture, so on and so forth. So, let's understand, you know, some real fundamentals. Say your camera is locked. It's super glued at ISO, uh, excuse me, at the shutter speed, 1 60 of a second. You have the exact same amount of light coming in, for sake of argument. Your lens is locked in at the aperture of f5.6. So, what do you have? You have three levels of gain. Sensor gain, the amount of light that's actually received at the sensor for transmission to the AD converters, which is passed on through the SNR firmware, which eliminates out much of that noise and artifacts. The secondary level, you actually have signal gain, which is the SNR firmware, the signal received post-sensor for amplification by increasing the ISO if you've done so. Say you, you want to shoot compositionally this shot and you got to crank the ISO up to 6400. You have signal received amplification. So it's the secondary tier before it's written to the card, but after the sensor at the AD converters and the SNR firmware, 
where the gain is increased because you have dialed up your ISO from say 200 to ISO 6400 or higher. Okay. And the third is outside of the camera, that software gain. Now obviously there isn't a whole hell of a lot you could do with the JPEG. You can to a certain extent, but not really. This is why you want to be shooting in RAW. RAW! Okay. Software gain. You know that little exposure slider in Lightroom? And other applications, applications. What do you think it's there for? Try doing that with a raw. I mean, try doing that with a JPEG image. Um, noise has a frequency. This is what SNR firmware eliminates. Now, as is the case with ham radio, uh, the greater the uh, the antenna to uh, to the wave the frequency to be received, like quarter a quarter wave, uh, one half wave, or one eighth wave. This is probably stuff you don't understand. Most of you aren't into ham radio. This is a quarter wave uh, two meter antenna. It's a Yagi. Okay, you got a driver, a reflector, and a director. This is a three element uh, quarter wave Yagi. Okay. This is for 144 megahertz up through 148 megahertz. Okay, if I were to bring this up to a full wave, it'd be larger. I can actually point this, stick it on an antenna rotor, dial it into the signal amplification. The smaller this is, I can make this, or cut it down to about yay big, and make it a, uh, make it a one eighth wave. It'd be really tiny. I could even stick it out the back window of the car. It's still a Yagi, which is a directional antenna, but just forget about that for a second. But it is all about signal gain and where it occurs at. And if you understand these three principles, you'll understand how your DSLR works. And understanding how your it's your everybody you know. And I've taken a lot apart a lot of uh, of digital cameras. And man, oh shit, they're complicated inside. There is like a billion screws and just a thousand parts. And uh, you know, I don't care how tough you think your DSLR is. Man, there's so much crap inside. Every DSLR by Canon, Nikon, Fuji. It's ten pounds of shit in a five pounds bag in a five pound bag. Um, it's amazing that they don't fail a lot more often. I mean, it's really a testament to ingenuity. But you need to understand where gain occurs at and why, for example, you want to shoot at the lowest possible ISO. This is also, like I said at the beginning of this video, why um, full frame uh, sensors with larger photo site. Full frame sensors aren't going anywhere by the way. Full frame sensors with larger photo site which have better gain like this antenna this uh, quarter wave antenna let's say this represents a full frame sensor with larger photo sites. Well the future is and it's already occurring from Canon and of course Nikon's working on it right now instead of having this large ass freaking antenna what we've done is we've crammed a lot more of these antennas onto the sensor. Instead of making this this big, we'll chop everything off about here and here and here. Okay, you got uh, reflector, driver, re reflector, driver, and director. Let's say this represents a photo site and a sensor, and you got up to billion of these on uh, on your uh, FX sensor. Well, they don't need to be this big anymore. Why? And uh, why the hell are people with $20,000 lenses out shooting birds at a thousand yards away, you know, using uh, DX sensors with much smaller photo sites? Because you can crop the hell out of it. There's a lot more information per square millimeter captured on that sensor there is on current full frame sensor, except for the, the most recent Canon that's come out. Okay, chopping this in half, I'm going to be able to cram a lot more uh, photo sites onto the sensor. It's nothing other than a full frame sensor with DX pixel density. But the advantages of large photo sites has been negated. Okay, it doesn't need to exist anymore. Let's go on to video number two and I will wrap this up. Okay, great. Then you'll have a better understanding of what the hell is going on in your camera.